What is it? Can you show a us what it is? It's a whoopee cushion. It's a whoopee cushion. What do you do with it? Getting low on intros, so if you want to send an intro this way and make the vlog, send me your intro. <laughs> I don't know why I got so angry. Uh, so, remember when I said I was going to make the super secret bonus awesome vlog? Well, if if I... A uh, super secret bonus awesome... Pussed out <laughs> and decided not to make it. It's still in my head and I still feel like I should, so it might happen. But, not today. But I do have a treat for you. I get emails on uh, almost a daily basis. Hey Sean, can I have your training? Can I have your train? Can I have your training, Sean? What are you doing for training, Sean? Send me your training. Then just give me your training. No. I'm not gonna give you my training for a few reasons. I've said this in the past. It took over 10 years to get to the volumes and intensities that I am doing right now. So if I give it to you and your training age is way lower than mine, you will die, or just get hurt, probably. <laughs> and number two, it's my training. <laughs> It's made specifically for me. So why would it work for you the same way it will work for me? So my treat for you is I will explain the first general prep cycle. And as always with any good training, the intensity goes from low to high as the season progresses. And the volume goes from high to low as the season progresses. So that's true amongst all training, good training programs. I won't say all training programs because there's probably some crap out there. But all good training programs, that's usually how it is. So, let's show you how I set up my week of Gen Prep Cycle 1. After the season, I had a meeting with Steve and Caroline White. I took information I learned from Bubba Sparks, Danny Wilkerson, Mary Saxer's coach, Giovanni Lenaro, uh, Brian Yokoyama, all those California cues, Coach Rick. Taking some information and ideas from Talon Singer. Took what I wanted to change, took their ideas, took the ones I liked, and now I'm creating a new training cycle. Best one I've ever done in my entire life. That's kind of the idea. I'm really good at getting all the information and not believing all of it, but taking what works for me and then creating my own unique kind of program based on my knowledge and um, some input from other people. So that's what I have done. You never know, it's always scary. <laughs> it's, I'm still terrified, but I'm excited at the same time. Okay, first before we start, I always do, it, it takes at least 45 minutes to do my warm up and it takes at least 20 minutes to do my cool down, but I'm not going to add those in there. Because those aren't the meat and potatoes of the workout. You want to know what the meat and potatoes are of the workout. Get your pencils ready. Monday, I do accelerations, usually with a sled for short sprints, no more than 40 meters. And then after that, I horizontal plyo jumps. Light taps, nothing crazy. After that, I do weights. Tuesday, I do some form of pole drills, whether it's just walking pole plants. It's super basic. Again, the intensity is low and the volume is high. And then I do recovery circuits. On Tuesday I did two med ball recovery circuits and one core recovery circuit. And Carrie did it on that one. And you could tell after about exercise three she didn't want to be in the video anymore. No, be in the video. Come on. Come on. GoPro has wide view. <laughs> So she made the video anyways. Wednesday I do hill runs. And just recently, I decided to start doing them with a pole because I didn't like how long it was taking for me to start feeling comfortable running with a pole again. After that, I do some sort of bounding, followed by multi throws and weights. Thursday, this is almost the exact same as Tuesday, except I do different recovery circuits, but a lot of pole drills as well. Tons of them. Friday are a little longer accelerations and I don't use the sled nearly as much. I take it off sooner. And then I do in place jumps.
followed by weights. Saturday I do tempo runs, which are my least favorite day of the week. I have come to like it, cause I, yeah. And then I do high bar core after that. That was my cycle one. You're welcome, that's how I do it. Also, I have been doing everything with uh, the free lap timing system. And I will tell you guys the truth, cause I don't lie to you. I'm not sponsored by them, I'm not really I'm not making any money off these videos I'm making. They sent me a free lap device and was like, hey, if you can make a couple of videos showing how it works, we'll send you a device. So they sent me a device. I actually really like it. Uh, the more I use it, the more I realize that the ones that felt good, the time was actually a little bit faster. The ones felt, that felt crappy, I have... Absolute data telling me it was crappy. <laughs> so. I've been trying it for everything. I use it for my sleds, my sprints, I've even used it uh, running up the hill with the pole. It's pretty cool, and I'm excited to try it more indoors when um, wind doesn't affect the time so much because that's what I found every week, that if I run into a headwind or a tailwind and the wind's a little different, my times are super jacked up. Free Lab is cool, check it out, and that's why I've been making videos on it because I believe in the product and I actually enjoy using it, it's really cool actually. Second. Uh, you know Michael Seaman? He is the founder of Taco Grip. I got a sweet package in the deal. This shirt came with it. It came with this note that said, Sean, enjoy the gift. Best of luck in your preseason training. Michael. And so he sent me some chalk. Remember when I did the Taco Grip review? I just tried the tape and I tried the sticky tape and it didn't work for me. And I met Michael at a street meet in North Carolina this year. Michael, I'm so sorry. I appreciate you sending me the tape, but it just didn't work. My hands are too sweaty and I apologize. I couldn't make a video. I just didn't feel comfortable saying that it worked for me. If it didn't, I feel really bad. I wish I could do more for you. He just goes, hey, no problem, man. Our whole goal is to get the perfect grip for every individual out there. And if the tape wasn't right for you, we need to come up with something else. He sent me this chalk. And I'm not gonna lie, this is by far the best chalk I've ever used. It's super fine. And I guess they bake it so it has absorbent properties in it. So me with my wet hands that are kind of sweaty when I pole vault, and that's why the tape didn't work. This chalk dries them out like crazy and... I have dry, awesome hands. And I've only used it for weight so far, but usually I'm chalking up after every set rep, but now I'm just using one thing at Taco Grip and I'm good for the whole like session usually, which is amazing. I can't wait to try it pole vault and see how it works. Michael Seaman's the coolest guy ever. If you have to get chalk or tape, buy from Taco Grip because he's a pole vaulter. <laughs> And because you know the guy who's running it, it's super cool. Okay, my next cycle starts a week from Monday, which means I am my glorious, glorious rest week. I love the rest week. Some more exciting potential news. Daniel Ryland, 19 plus pole vaulter, contacted me. Said, hey, Minnesota gets cold. Come down here anytime and train with us. Minnesota does get cold. <laughs> Daniel Ryland has a uh, vault palooza going on, so go add vault palooza on Facebook so you can get more information on it. All right, one more person to plug. There's a new pole vault club, Philadelphia Jumps Club, in Philadelphia, obviously. It's awesome. They already bought 50 poles from Gale just to get it started. They have everything, I think they said, from an 100 to a 200. <laughs> it's just they have every pole you could ever imagine that you're getting this thing rolling. So if you guys could head over to Philadelphia Jumps Club and like them on Facebook, and maybe put a little team hoot so people know where it came from, do that. Because they're awesome, and I'm looking at trying to maybe get over there and go check the place out. Like always, please subscribe. And if you don't, I will sacrifice him to the gods. <laughs> Follow me on Instagram or Twitter. Both of them are Sean Danger Hoot, because Danger is my middle name. Um, if you want Team Hoot gear, as of right now, it is on Zazzle.com slash Sean Danger Hoot. So go get it there. Who knows what next week we'll hold in the vlog. What do you want to see? Leave it in the comments below of what you want to see in the next vlog. And like always, please remember to send me intro stuff. Okay, bye. Boop. This is how we do the Renaissance <laughs> Festival. <laughs> me about ready to get picked on. And I was like, um, it's not me, but you know that guy back there? That's Brad's dad. <laughs> but I'm sorry, but I threw him under the bus. I threw Brad's dad under the bus. The uh, drag queen walked over, sat on his lap, 
and Brad's dad was like, like, oh my god, this is terrible. The drag queen goes, Hey, you look pretty uncomfortable. He's like, He's like, not as uncomfortable as me, because I'm the one sitting on my own penis. <laughs> <laughs> so Roger immediately went, Oh god! <laughs> oh my 